I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to do one of my favorite techniques, dyeing a wound cake of yarn in some food coloring. What makes this one different is today our yarn base is this Patton's Shetland Chunky, which is only 25% wool. It is 25% wool, 75% acrylic. Because of the high acrylic content, the final color in this yarn will be more muted than if it were if we had started with wool. Um, but because of the cake form gives limited access to some of the fiber, so like the yarn in the center, we can end up with some kind of really fun and cool gradient, even on a wool acrylic blend. The dye that we are going to use today is the Wilton Color Right Color Performance System. This dye is um, really concentrated viscous food coloring. And I currently have some of the color mixed um, right now. And I think in one is either eight or ten drops of just the base blue. And then in the second one, it was two drops of base blue and two drops of pink. So there is basically, this is gonna be all blue number one with a hint of red number three in there. I'm not expecting to get breaking in today's project. I mean, we'll see a little bit because there's a tiny bit of red number three in there. But most of the gradient that we see will be because more of the blue will absorb to the outside of the yarn than the inside. At least that's what we're expecting. So. Now I'm gonna go and set up my dye pot. In this dye pot, I just added eight cups of tap water, and now I'm gonna add three tablespoons of white vinegar, approximately. Now I am going to add our yarn, which has not been pre-soaked yet. Um, I'm gonna let it sort of pre-soak here in this dye bath as it is heating up. I have already turned on the stove. So you can see I'm just sort of squeezing some air out of it. I find that it's hard to pre-soak a yarn cake and then transfer it, transfer it somewhere else. I think it's a lot easier in general to let it happen in the pot itself. There we go. And you can see that the surface is not entirely submerged. Once we um, I think I might go ahead and add, actually I guess we've got another cup of water in with our dyes, but I think I am going to go ahead and add one more cup of water, bringing this up to nine cups of water, three tablespoons of vinegar to start off with, um, and then once it heats up, we'll add our dye. We've got some bubbles starting to form. And I'm now going to add our dye. So the first one I'm going to pour is the one that has some of the red number three in it. Um, and I'm just sort of pouring it across the top, then over onto the side. I'm curious, aha, uh -huh, I see some of the pink in there. Now I'm doing just the other color of blue around and I don't want to squeeze it but I am going to sort of press it um, so that way there's some exposure to the color but you can see almost that stripe from that little bit of red number three because that will just strike so much faster than the rest of the than the rest of the color and so now we wait. <laughs> I am, I mean, we're not, we're not quite at a boil, but I have the heat down on a medium heat. And yeah, let's go ahead and give this 10 minutes and then we will see um, how we're doing with the color absorption. One thing I do want to add is that when you're dyeing these wool acrylic blends, you'll get something that looks extremely saturated at first. So right now this looks like we have a really, really bright blue. 
as these dry, the colors will get much, much paler. I think that the acrylic fibers tend to be pretty translucent um, when they're wet, which is what makes, I think, these colors appear brighter than they will actually look on the yarn. Started bubbling a little fast, gonna reduce the heat to low. That red number three stripe across the top, that you can clearly see. And there's still a fair amount of blue here in the pot, but I'm not sure if you can tell that it's a darker blue around the outside. And we've got a lighter blue towards, you know, the top at least. I'm afraid to look in that, towards the center to see how much that this blue has penetrated. Hopefully not too far. Hopefully we'll get the gradient, that kind of gradient that we that we love, but nevertheless, we'll have a fun yarn. I'm gonna go ahead and add one, two more tablespoons of vinegar to help the last of the dye absorb. There is plenty of vinegar in this pot already, um, and that if this were, you know, a different type of yarn, some of that color would have absorbed already. However, in cases of cake dyeing like this, it can take longer. And it can take longer because there is limited surface area that the dye can reach already. So if, you know, the fibers around the outside have absorbed as much dye as they can, then the dye, um, you know, it'll take longer for it to penetrate to the center and longer for the color to absorb overall. This is why when I do this kind of technique on a cake of 100% wool, the colors can penetrate a lot further than they might penetrate a cake of a superwash merino nylon yarn where we might end up with just a little bit of color on the outside because it'll all strike so quickly. So. That's just something to keep in mind as you are planning. But now we've got the heat on low, and we'll come check on this in another 10 minutes. With a combination of the more time and more vinegar, there is still some color left in the pot, but it is significantly less than there was before. I'm now gonna turn off the heat entirely and leave this on its own for a bit. It might absorb more of the blue or it might not. Very frequently, if you're gonna have some color left in the pot, it'll be a blue around this shade. And ultimately, that little amount of blue in there is not um, a ton of color. Don't forget how opaque the dyes were when we first added it to the yarn. So anyway, I'm gonna let this cool a bit and then we'll come and take it out of the pot and peek a little bit inside. It, oh, it's still a little warm in here. I can put my fingers in so I'm not burned or anything, but I think I'll use tongs to take it out. So look at that. That, my friends, is water that is almost Almost, almost, but not quite completely clear. Let's stick it in to this bowl and take a look inside. Okay, we're zoomed in. And aha! Uh -huh. See, we do have still actually reasonable color penetration, but the hue of what is inside is very different than the hue of what is on the outside. So at this stage, I'm gonna let this cool so then I can wring out more water. And then once it's cool, we will unravel this cake onto a nitty knotty before we wash the yarn. This gradient is really, really cool. It starts with sort of this purpley blue that gets more blue but then paler as you go to the other end. There are still some of the purple hints throughout even the other end of the, the skein, which I think is nice because it helps tie everything in together. Um, I think that this would be a lot of fun to knit up. The one thing is that this is still wet, so I am really curious what the final color will look like. But 
Now we can go rinse the skein. I'm not expecting anything to rinse out, but it still smells very vinegary, so we're gonna go wash it. Here is our lovely, lovely gradient. Yeah, as soon as I put this in, I mean, this was still pretty damp, but the colors look a lot darker when wet. Maybe, we'll, we'll see. Um, I don't think I've dyed with this exact little acrylic blend before. Um, maybe I did in one of the early episodes of Dye Pot Weekly, but most of the time I have 20% wool, 80% acrylic when I have a blend like this. So I added more than I needed to, but some dish soap here. Uh, this can sometimes help uh, release some unbound dye and um, you know, because you might have the water clear without soap, but I think a little soap will just, the bleeding's going to happen, you want it to happen when you're washing the yarn versus coming out of your finished project. And you can see that we do have a little, little tiny amount of bleeding here. So, but this is not bad at all. I am going to go ahead and rinse out the soap. Um, I expect that the bleeding will stop shortly. If it does not, I'll come back and tell you about it. But then we're going to go hang up this yarn to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. The purples feel a lot more muted. And when you look closely, you can see the heathered quality from the acrylic that did not take dye. But overall, we still have a really nice amount of color. It is the, the purples are way less vibrant than this would have been if we had been dyeing wool. But I'm really, really pleased with the amount of blue that we have here. Um, and I think that this could turn into something really fantastic. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new dyeing videos every week and I love to play around with a variety of both yarn bases and types of dye and techniques in general. Did you know that you can buy yarn that has been featured in Chemnitz Tutorials dyeing videos? Check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. You can find a link both in the video description and in the iCard. And in my shop I have dozens and dozens and dozens of skeins of yarn that have been featured in past and upcoming videos. I always make it clear in the, in the item description itself uh, what video the yarn was dyed in. So it's just another way to experience the Chemnitz Tutorials content by holding and creating something out of the yarn that you watched get dyed. Thank you so much for watching.